Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Tuesday at a bright and early 1.08 p.m. And I still love you. I am in such a good mood. Because this weekend was the Magic the Gathering World Championship 26. I don't know if you watched this event, but it was fucking so good. It was so good. It was so good. For a number of reasons. First of all, the games were unbelievably close. Now, in typical SA format, you're traditionally supposed to have the best point be the final one. So you really end with a oomph. Fuck that. Um, God, that was a good explanation. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to lead with the most important quality for any single esports event ever, which is that the games are good. Because let me tell you something. I have stayed up till 3 a.m. many a time when I was a big follower of the Korean brood war scene in high school and college, only to have it be an absolutely one-sided 4-0 sweep. All right. 45 minutes has passed. Huh. I mean, the number of games that went all the way. Uh, many of the matches were best of best of threes. And we're not allowed to say that because that's a little confusing. We're supposed to say best of three matches, not best of three games. That's, woo, that's the verbiage. Words have power, and that's the power we're supposed to wield. Every single one of them was like 1-0, 1-1, 2-1 that went to the finals, uh, the final game. It was so good. Yeah, by the way, a best of best of threes, a best of three matches means, like, if I go 2-0 in the first match, I've won a match. And then you narrowly defeat me 2-1 in the second match. So now we're tied 1-1 in matches. You know what I mean? Like, it was so good. Holy shit. It was amazing. It was absolutely spectacular. Uh, so I'm, a, I'm in really high spirits just from the gameplay. Second reason why the MTG World Championship was so good. Your pal Day9 was the host of that final day, and I did a very good job. Did, and like, holy crap, I am so happy with it. And not not because I am merely a monument of vanity, but also because, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit why, why I found that very, very difficult. Um, but God, God, I fucking, I actually did a good job. And let me talk a little bit about that, because it's very relevant to um, my life. Uh, and by the way, we're going to be playing the three World Championship decks, the top three, Paulo Vitor, Dama de Rosas, Azorius, Control, Marcio Carvalho's Jeskai Fires, and of course, Seth Manfield's Mono Red, which is a real flexor. Um, many of you know that I was having real anxiety issues, and in fact, at the Mythic Championship 7, I had just had stress piling and piling and piling and piling, and I was not... It's not that I necessarily increasingly had bad things happen. I, I really just had, like, a small number of very stressful, traumatic things happen. Um, but I, I, I was not finding a way to deflate the balloon, as it were, right? Stressful things happen, and your, your balloon of uh, ability to stay composed and ability to deal with it and to just self-reassure it starts getting bigger and bigger. And then you just have normal daily stress, like, oh, no. We're out of toilet paper, and I have to go to the store, and I'm low on time. Like a little stress, you know, starts to build. Things like that. And man, at Mythic Championship Seven, I was, I was just really having a hard time self-regulating. I mean, like just huge adrenaline surges whenever anything would happen. I like someone would pull a good move, and I would like have a panic attack. <laughs> this is so bad. So I've been I've been spending lots and lots and lots and lots of time just thinking about self-regulation techniques, thinking about. Um, what I can do to make myself feel comfortable going in. Also techniques for how, if I do have some spike um, of stress that I wasn't expecting, how to help deal with that and all that stuff. Um, and my God, I just felt great. I felt great the entire time. Probably the, the most useful thing uh, that was helpful to me. Because um, there's one thing I really hate whenever anyone gives advice. I have real strong opinions about advice tutorials, educational content, because I built my career on it. Um, I really hate whenever someone tells you the goal and not the technique. Tells you the goal and not the action. Well, what you want to do in this game of StarCraft is you want to be able to get more units and expansions than the opponent while preventing them from getting too many expansions. Great. Thank you. That didn't help anyone. 
Or if someone, you know, when it comes to something like being stressed when you're going out on stage, don't worry, you're gonna do great. Just remind yourself that it's okay, even if you don't do a good job. That's not, that's not the issue. The issue is that I have adrenaline going so heavily through my body that my throat's closing up and I can't remember what is happening. What do I do about that? Um, and so here, here's a concrete thing that, that I, I recently have, have discovered, which is when you're stressed, here's something. When you're stressed, you know what you, you commonly do? You'll go, Whew. you'll just take a breath like that. You know, like if someone comes to you and says, hey, I want to let you know, uh, we're probably going to have to restart the project. And you're like, what? <sighs> All right. All right. What's going on? It's really common. You'll just take a breath. Um, and if you're getting ready for something like, all right, we're going to go out. We're, we're in the state championship. Guys, let's stay focused. <sighs> all right, let's do it. It's just a natural thing to take a deep breath. Now, I want you to right now think about how much air is in your lungs. Now, just start inhaling. And just be aware at how much more you can fill up your lungs with. Okay? Now exhale a lot until your lungs are almost empty. And now just start talking. Hey, Sean, it's good to see you today. Just start saying shit like that. What I was finding is that when there would be some sort of adrenaline, uh, that, that honestly a lot of it comes from excitement, right? It's the world championship. Like, oh, woo, all right, woo, okay, cool. Um, what, what happens is you normally start, you start doing this stress response where you'll start to breathe more deeply or you'll be trying to take deep breaths to calm down. But the important thing is to make sure that your lungs are mostly empty when you start talking. That's the technique, that's the important thing. When I start saying this, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, breathing exercises are good. I'm not talking about breathing exercises at all. I'm talking about if you inhale, get all the air in your lungs and start talking, and often you'll hear that your voice is a little more wavery than it normally is, and you have uh, issues like this because your muscles are being used. You know, it's kind of like if you hold a really heavy weight with your arm extended, your arm is going to start shaking because that's a normal thing for muscles to do. If you inhale and you have a ton of air in your lungs, your voice starts to sound a little unnatural and you have difficulty with breathing. So in other words, the stress response of inhaling and taking deep breaths would often cause me to go out on stage with more air in my lungs that is helpful for sounding like a normal person. So what I would do is right when they were like, Sean, three, two, one, I would go. And I would get rid of almost all the air in my lungs. And then I would come out and I would start talking. And immediately I feel so much more control over my voice. There's a lot more relaxation in the muscles because I'm just not using them because those lungs are mostly empty. And holy shit, did that help so freaking much. Oh my God, just saying to myself, I need about 20% air in my lungs in order to sound like a normal dude. And most people, when they're just feeling calm and feeling reasonable, they just don't use that much air in their lungs. They just don't use that much. And when they start to get stressed, they start to breathe a lot and they don't consciously say to themselves, hey, let me get rid of all this air to get down to the point where I start talking. It's so fucking useful, really helpful, really valuable. And so um, an another little uh, tangenty thing, um, Oh, I, I learned not long ago, maybe like two years ago, about four stages of mastery, right? Stage one of mastery is unconscious incompetence, <laughs> which is where you suck at the game and you're passed out on the floor. No, that's not what it is. Unconscious incompetence is when you are unaware of what you're doing wrong, you, unconsciously, it, that you are bad at the thing. You, you just blithely suck, okay? The next stage. The next stage is conscious incompetence. Man, I really never seem to have enough units in these StarCraft games, and I don't know what the heck is going wrong. You are aware that there's a problem, but you can't identify the steps to get over it. Third stage is conscious competence. Here is exactly the steps that I need to take in order to accomplish the thing, and here's why it works, and here's the whole process, right? It's the enumerated steps. And the, and the final stage is unconscious incompetence, where you just do the thing almost without thinking. And particularly in this fourth stage, this is when people, uh, you'll see those moments of mastery where someone's like, you know what, uh, th th this is the right move to do, and I know it's right, and I can't, I can't explain why. Did I not say unconscious incompetence? Yeah, the fourth stage is unconscious 
competence. Sorry, I may have misspoken. Fourth stage, unconscious competence, where I'm, I'm just masterful. I'm just masterful at the thing, and I'm not even thinking about it. And again, this is where you get people who will be like, okay, this is the right move, but I can't quite explain why. They, they just, they've done the processing unconsciously, and they're very good at it. Um, so, yeah, so unconscious incompetence. Un or conscious incompetence, conscious competence, and then unconscious competence. It is correct. I am, I am speaking correctly when I say unconscious competence. Unconscious competence. Everyone get that? Everyone get what I'm saying now? Because there's that moment where I start. Uh, <laughs> there's a moment where, um, yeah. Okay. So I, but you get me. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Okay. Cool. So anyways, why do I bring up these four stages of mastery? Because if I think about when I first started streaming, I was just like, I'm going to stream. And then I got some very positive feedback from it. And that felt good. So I did more. And I got very positive feedback. And it felt good. And then I did an event. And I was really excited about it because I was on this wave of positivity. And I did that. And it felt good. And frankly, I wasn't thinking that much about what I was doing. They were just like, OK, Sean, you're live in a second. I went, OK. And then I just felt good. Um, and then what happened is, you know, I started to have more stressful things happen in my life and it was really affecting my ability to just get up on stage and be happy and enjoy myself. Cause there was a lot of reasons to be stressed and unhappy. Um, and, and because everything was not conscious, what I was doing, I had such a hard time getting to there. I had such a hard time figuring out those steps because I knew that I used to have it and I just felt like, well, now I don't have it. And I don't know how to get it. I don't know what it is. And the answer is there were quietly steps that could be pointed to concretely that I was doing without realizing it. And then when I stopped doing those, because I had not identified them, I was unable to get back to the mastery before. So I've been feeling really, really, really good about um, performative stuff lately. Like the hosting this weekend just felt amazing because... A lot of the way I will look if I am hosting or on a desk or something like that is I'll look chilled. I'll look good. I'll be kind of cheerful. I'll be making dumb jokes. I will be behaving like someone who's chilling with their friends, even though it is a much higher stress environment. And this last weekend in particular, I was employing a lot of these techniques to try to do a good job, plus having incredible support from the production team. In particular, Rich Hagen is a complete god among men, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it just being supportive and encouraging um, throughout all of that. And so I I'm, I'm on that high still. I am still feeling like I'm the king of the world, and I'm not even going to die at the end of the three hours because I'm unwilling to get on a very large door. God, it's so good. Bud Mon says, I really liked how you hosted TI7, but I know that there's been negative feedback from the Dota community. How do you deal with receiving criticism like that? It seems very discouraging. I didn't read fucking any of it. Are you kidding me? Why would I read any of that bullshit? Because I was there at the time, and I did not do an amazing job. I did a very functional job. I was fine. I was no hero. And, you know, if you, if you play a game of StarCraft and you just forget Supply Depot seven times and you whiff on your worker production... The fuck would I need to go to a forum and read a bunch of idiots trying to tell me, you know, I think the problem is that he missed on his supply depot count. And I'm saying idiots not because their analysis is wrong. I'm saying I fucking know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why, I, why am I doing this job anyways? It's because I have a group of peers who get this. I have someone read all the feedback, all of it, go through it create a nice compiled document that actually has something constructive and then speak to me about it. So it always gets to me, but I'm not gonna read some raw, unfiltered attempt of someone on the internet to dunk on me about something that I very fucking know happened. God damn. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's it's kind of funny. The Almost everyone I know that is actually good at a thing, they have a process for evaluating for self-evaluating, right? They have a process for self-evaluating. Uh, and whenever, an I, I see many observers, particularly in, um, particularly in games, you'll see, be like, he messed this up. And frankly, in games, most of what you're doing is messing up. You're trying to mitigate your natural urge to not fuck up. 
that's what you're trying to do. That that is the game, right? And having someone be like, "Oh, you know, you know, I have the feedback for you." You know, it's Yeah. So, you know, sometimes I'm not great as a host. Sometimes I'm okay. Sometimes I'm bad. Sometimes I'm good. And when it's good, I feel really good. There you go. I don't have any particular self-hatred about the any of those poor performances. You know, it's just, it's just like any other skill-based activity. It's just like if you're trying to play a game and trying to be good, you're going to have those days where you just kind of suck ass. You know what? That's fine. That's fine. It is, it, I, I actually do think for the sake of creativity, I think that 95% of what someone doing creative work needs is encouragement, not feedback, not criticism, not any of that nonsense. I think that feedback has somehow received this pedestal-like status, right? Um, <laughs> I feel like people are like, well, we... <clears throat> we collect user feedback and we care what our users say as though someone is carrying like the shroud of Turin and they're just trying not to drop it into the puddle like oh here it comes you know f feedback is it's just data and you know what you're often getting a shitload of data as is and often people who are giving feedback I want to stress it's not that anyone leaving these comments is inherently dumb or inherently wrong or inherently any of those things. It's just often there's an opinion. And going in this opinion's direction is good and going in this opinion's direction is good. They would both lead to something good. So there's no way to reconcile both of them because they contrast with each other. You just got to do one. Um... But this whole feedback on a pedestal thing, the idea that I, the creative, I have no ability to figure out what's going on, even though I am the one that has spent more working on my creative work than anyone else. I have no idea at all. You know, I probably have a shitload of ideas about what's going right, what's going wrong, and occasionally feedback will come in and help confirm a suspicion you had, but you were having trouble articulating, oh, you know what, that's really good, and then keep going back and working and working and working on it. This person's just something, let's keep going back, yeah, working and working and working and working. Um, but I mean, particularly, uh, you know, not Zomi is saying as a writer, I like feedback when I'm done, but not before. Please let me finish polishing the garbage out. Yes. It's like if someone, if like, it's, it's like if I said, you know, what? I'm going to draw a circle and I start drawing the circle and then someone comes up and removes the pen from my fingers and goes, you see, this isn't a circle. You need to finish it all the way. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. Or as I was talking about at the start of this whole thing. People state the goal, but not state the te or but they don't state the technique. So, for instance, if I'm playing StarCraft and I've missed my supply depot seven times, if someone comes up, Sean, you need to stop forgetting your supply depots. I know that's the goal. You haven't provided a solution. You've just restated the obvious problem back to me. The question is, why do I keep missing those? What are the steps to take to avoid those, and how do I practice that, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is my little rant. So that's that's kind of why I'm uh, very happy for having figured out some of these uh, techniques that work for me. I don't think this oh, exhale eighty percent of the shit in your lungs um, will work for everyone, but it sure works for me, and I can figure it out. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of this whole culture of like we need to accept more feedback. We need to get more avenues in. I, you know, I literally practice this all the time while live. Where I will just say, you know what, I'm not looking for feedback on this right now. I, here's what I'm trying to do, and I find that people go, yeah, great, cool. People are super reasonable if you just say like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing something. I'm, you know, just working on it. People are so reason they get it. They get it. They're so it's so sensible. Um, yeah, and I think there's just like, no, 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 please tell me, please invite, create the floodgates, open it up, and all this sort of shit, you know? It's like, 